Good morning, welcome once again to my shop. I was in my gallery this morning looking around and I discovered that I'm low on mushrooms. So today's project, we're going to turn a mushroom and this is a little mushroom I turned and it's got threads in it. Uh, boxwood top. This appears to be some bubinga that threaded fairly well. This is a proper box because the bottom the base is hollowed out so that's what we're going to make today. Now here is the twist. We're going to make it out of Banksia seed pod and as much as I know about that it grows in Australia. Uh, this is a seed pod which means all these little holes were filled with a seed. It's some sort of plant. If you live in Australia send me a comment on what exactly this is. It doesn't matter. So, I got a piece of this chucked up into my lathe, and uh, now one of the things I'm going to try to do is leave a little bit of the natural edge from this seed pod in this area right here. The rest of that I'm going to turn away, and uh, let's get started. Well, in an effort to protect my lungs this morning, I'm going to wear a respirator, and I'll dub in the sound in the narration later. Here is a shot of my finished Banksia seed pod mushroom box. Stay tuned and I'll show you what I did to make it. Now, although there are some similarities and some things that are not very similar to wood in looking at this Banksia seed pod, I'm beginning to rough it down with my spindle roughing gouge. And now I'm going to take my diamond parting tool and establish a tenon on each end. Toward the headstock, will be the lid and I'm working on the tenon on the base right now uh, next I'll go to the tenon on my lid and complete that as I continue working on my tenon I need to size that and I'll do that with the vernier caliper. So the tenon on my base is complete and I'll measure that and that's okay. The tenon on my lid needs a little bit of work, it's too big and I'll take that down a little bit more and measure it and that'll be okay. Next what I'm doing is I'm defining the area and I'm going to leave the natural edge portion of the Banksia seed pod right at the lower edge of my lid. Now with my spindle roughing gouge I am profiling the outside of my mushroom box. Here I'm doing the base and now I'm doing the lid and I'm just getting this kind of in the ballpark. Roughly profiled. So at this point, I'm going to part off the base and the lid between centers, but I'm not going to completely part it off because this can be a little bit dangerous. So I've got the mushroom box reversed. I'm tearing off the bottom or the base of the mushroom box and I'm going to profile a little bit of the lid with my quarter inch bowl gouge. I can't reach a lot of this but I'll get some of the mass out and that'll be easier to take off when I reverse chuck the piece. You're now looking at the inside of the lid. And you'll soon notice that I'm struggling a bit to take out any material because there really isn't any grain to this. So I resort to drilling a hole to the depth of my lid. I'm just marking that with my finger. I'll take a spindle gouge and I'll try to do a little back hollowing which proves difficult. And I find the best way to 
take off material is to simply scrape it. So cutting from the outside in doesn't work all that well. Here I am starting to develop the female recess for the base tenon. And later on I'll jam chuck this together and finish off the lid. Now I continue to remove material with my spindle gouge in a scraping mode. Now I resort to a regular scraper to finish off the inside of my lid and get ready for the next step. I now have the base of my box chucked up into my scroll chuck. Now next I'm going to hold up the lid in the orientation that it'll be on the base of my project. And I continue to profile the base and right here I'm going to work on the tenon where the lid will be attached. And I've got a parting tool and I'm going to see if my lid will fit and I'm just about there. I continue to work on the tenon on the top of the base and I've cut out a lot of this process. I'm just trial and error fitting the lid onto the base so I can jam chuck the lid and finish it. Now I'm just profiling the upper part of the base with my small bowl gouge. I have the base of my mushroom box in my jaws and I'm going to jam the lid on that and I think I'll be okay. I'm trying to avoid bringing that uh, 70 pound Powermatic tailstock up. I'm going to put a little water on that. Check my depth. Don't have a lot of thickness up there, so I'll be careful about that. Now with my lid jammed on to my base, I commence finishing the top of the lid. And I don't really have a lot of thickness through here, so I'm going to be a little bit careful. With the holes through there where the seeds go, it's uh, nice because you can see right through that and see your depth. So I'm going to take a finishing cut with my spindle gouge. And it looks like the jam chuck is holding fairly securely, so I'll continue on to the very top of my lid and complete the profile. Now as I complete the profile on the top of my lid, I'm going to shut the lathe off and inspect my progress. That's pretty good. I'm going to do a little bit more profiling with my small bowl gouge. And then I'm going to call it good and do a little sanding. Well, the little sanding I did for this project on the lid is complete. So now the base is chucked up and I'm hollowing that out. I'm starting with a scraper. And I'll continue with scrapers and eventually get to one of my hollowing tools. This particular gouge is an old bowl gouge that I ground to be used on the inside of a box. It's got very, very long swept back wings and works very nicely to scrape the inside of a box. Now I'm showing you my Mike Tchaikovsky hollowing tool. It's a carbide cutter with a bent end on it. And it's a very good tool for doing this little process here. Make sure that that curved area is in front of your tool rest. Otherwise you'll get a pretty bad catch in that uh, cutter will rotate on you and this really works very nicely. Now the next step after hollowing 
is going to be to fine tune the tenon that's going to connect the lid with the base. Well, there's my mushroom almost completed. I need to finish the base. So I've got a jam chuck prepared. And I'm going to have this cylinder right here go all the way down into my base of my mushroom. I'm going to put a little bit of water on that just for security. And when I jammed on the lid, when I was finished, I could barely get it off. So uh, sometimes that's the problem. Now the nice thing about this Banksia seed pod is you can see right through it. And I've got that fairly thin in some places. So I'm going to just round off the base. Now I've really enjoyed using a very small tool like this little bowl gouge. It's quarter inch bowl gouge. So uh, I'm not going to take very big cuts. And I'm not on there. That's better. Not much. Now I've got my speed increased to about 1500 RPM. That'll allow for a little less resistance. Well, I learned a lot turning this little mushroom out of Banksia seed pod. It's a little bit different than wood. There's no grain, um, but it's okay. It's, uh, it's fun. We should turn a mushroom once in a while just to remind ourselves not to take ourselves too seriously. And the nice thing about a mushroom is pretty much any form works. Okay. Now I'll give you a close up of that. So thank you very much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.